Alright guys, Touch Crow back again today. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. And this past weekend, no doubt we had one of the upsets in recent Call of Duty memory. Seattle Surge, bottom of the league, take down Atlanta phase, top of the league, best in the game, and they finish top eight in the tournament. A lot of people have been saying, with champs around the corner, what is going on with Atlanta phase? Why are they falling short? Are they getting overconfident? But also potentially, are they not playing as well in scrims as they have done as of late, indicating a wider problem with their team? Very much intrigued to get your thoughts in the comment section below. Like if you guys enjoyed the video, subscribe if you're new as always. I greatly appreciate it. I really upset the channel. Thank you very much indeed for doing that. First of all, this sweet I managed to miss from, uh, from Nick right here over at the Atlanta Face side. Joey Dempsey and Selly, I'm certainly having a stare off here in the venue in advance of this grand finals. Selly probably would have got the job done if he used his power to maximum effect. Don't imagine Joey Dempsey would stand too much of a chance against this man. Also wanted to mention this before we start the video, really just send, I thought this is kind of crazy. The fact that a Raid actually has been out of four out of the five major finals was settled on Raid Search. So Phase have won all of their, um, all of their grand finals in, in in the grand finals of the ma each major. They've won all of them on Raid Surge, which is a pretty remarkable, actually, to think about, that when they go to Raid Surge, they must just be so confident. Of course, didn't get the chance this past weekend to get the job done in the grand finals again. The grand finals phase lost. I'm pretty sure they lost an Express Search, and then it went to a Checkmate Harpoint that they lost, and then uh, that's when Toronto won that tournament. And this past weekend was also settled on Raid Surge and Destroy, and all of the phase ones also were won on that map. So pretty remarkable to think about. Also, I think it's crazy how, um, how good Raid is as a map still on this game. I think the standoff, maybe due to the verticality and due to the fact that it's a very small map anyway with the way the movement works in this game just wasn't maybe it wasn't destined to be that good standoff but Raid I think is phenomenal and also the fact that Raid I think is like no doubt the best uh, control map on this entire game and it was um it was made back in like 2012 right so many years before control as a game mode was even devised just um it just does go to show what a legendary map this is and that's the thing right going into future years I don't mind if Raid is just a staple of COD like I know that some um, people want innovation and people want uh, new maps right which I totally get like I don't think we should have the same maps every single year but um something like raid just don't for it to be in like every game especially every track game that's um to me it seems like an absolute no-brainer so at least we have some solid maps and of course a very interesting map to finish the series on no doubt about that but of course phase didn't get the chance this past weekend they do um the winner garrison control right here up against seattle surge to give them the upper hand in the series then they lose another half point and then they lose the map five against seattle to bow out of the tournament in honestly absolutely remarkable fashion so this was not a big expectation for anyone coming into this weekend we'll have a look in a second here the percentage of people that predicted rocket to win this entire tournament was um, basically non-existent. I imagine that FaZe were, you know, far and away the favourites to not even get top three here is, uh, well, absolutely out of the realms of possibility, it seems, falling at 3-2 to Seattle Surge to bow out of the tournament. We talked a couple of days ago, yes, this was on LAN. Of course, uh, look, these players have done phenomenal things on LAN in the past, but uh, with the crowd there, with the pressure on, is it the pressure that's getting to them? Is it not necessarily just from the fans, though, in the venue, but it might also be from the fact that, yes, they're the best team in the game. This is finally their chance. They're expected to win the World Championship. There's no doubt about it. They're going to win it in a lot of people's minds. All of a sudden, that's very much up in the air. And, um, well, maybe the pressure is getting to them in that regard. Also very interesting in the way the fact that you had Major Maniac and Priestet, formerly of Atlanta Phase last season, they get removed off the team. Arstees comes in. They go to Minnesota Rocker. They then beat Atlanta Phase this past weekend and then go on to win the entire tournament. So, um, yeah, very scary stuff indeed. And look, Seattle were no slouches this weekend. There's no doubt. It's not like Atlanta Phase lost to um, absolutely terrible teams. Seattle were playing very well indeed. But um, at the same time, not a loss you expect to have especially given that FaZe Online this entire season have basically rocked up to any series they want and just 3 0 anyone without a problem. I mean, this is how they sit on this entire season. They've lost, like, let's not get me wrong, they've lost three out of their last four series, which means that they were like, I mean, they were just ridiculous. They were like 33 and four or something outrageous. Now they're 34 and seven out of nowhere, but still by far dominating the league, over 100 points ahead of Toronto Ultra in second place. So look, still going into the World Championship here, a lot of people are going to consider them favorites. But from their perspective, they're probably thinking about it a little bit differently, right? They've got to go back to practice for these next few weeks and they've got to grind hard to try and improve but uh, the fact of the matter is because you're in winners round two already and have the buys you can see in the bracket right here they're going to be playing like they're going to come straight into this playing effectively cold right they don't have a warm-up series in a way i mean there's no warm-up series here at the world championship because every matchup is going to be very difficult indeed optic versus subline is probably the one that's uh, i guess more easy to call over at the winner's side you'd think that optic would end up winning that one at least on current form but um who really knows right they've got many weeks now for these teams to prepare for each other if you're um if 
if you're opting, you don't really have too much VOD to watch on New York, and maybe that's the topic we can have in the coming days. But FaZe are going to come into this series. They also don't have like too much ability to prepare in a sense to FaZe. Like, of course, they can prepare for both Optic and, and New York, but they can't prepare like all out for one of those teams like the other squads kind of can, because FaZe doesn't 100% know who they're going to be playing. And of course, they come into the series just straight up their first series that they're going to play. There's no warm up or anything. They won't play like a proper series for the next couple of weeks. So it's honestly a really big deal that FaZe come out here and do a great job. And of course, like, they're still very likely to make the run through the winner's bracket and end up winning this entire tournament, or at least um, yeah, avoid getting knocked out in the fashion that they did this time around. But it's far from out of the realms of possibility that they once again have a very difficult tournament right here. And what exactly has been going wrong for them as of late? Is it other teams just massively improving, getting way better, watching a load of phase VOD, right? Because the fact of the matter is, if you're Atlanta phase, you've been dominating the entire season. Every other team in the league is coming for your neck. They're looking like all your VODs. They're trying to figure out exactly what you do. They're trying to hard counter your strats on every single map you play. At some point, it may well catch up to you. And this is, of course, not the time of the season to slow down and start getting in your own heads and start overthinking things. And that's certainly what some of the players have been saying. And of course, going into the World Championship, everything is up in the air nowadays. It's not going to be a phase walk in the park. Minnesota Rocker are right there with them trying to get rid of. Of course, they won this entire event this past weekend. Less than 1% of people predicted that, and understandably so. And who knows what happens in a couple of weekends' time, right? Where you've got Ultra in there, you've got all these other teams that could potentially do some damage. But so, well, this is what Temp had to say about Atlanta Phase not actually looking so good even in practice as of late, and why exactly they might be falling short. Um, well, I'm, I'm curious uh, to get what, what do you guys think the main issue was for Phase this weekend? What do you guys think it was? Uh, I was going to say because. I've been playing like just past month like they haven't been playing that good in scrims either like when you play against them as well like I don't know what's been going on with them but they've definitely like I had them as a favorite too but I don't know they just been looking down like I, I don't think they should just forget about it like I think there's definitely something wrong with their game plan or execution or something mm. that they need to change I don't know bro I feel like they're like they're beating themselves. Like I feel like they might be in their own heads. Dude. Would you guys agree with that? Or do you? Th and on top of that, I think I think a lot of teams are just kicking up now, bro. I also want to give credit to other teams because obviously everybody's improved, especially Seattle. I think this is a different Seattle than we saw all year. Uh, part of me feels like Phase is like playing too confident at times. It's like they're <laughs> maybe I'm tripping, but I feel like they're they're making a lot more solo plays than they usually do, and maybe they're overconfident. They're like, you know what, we've been the best all year. Let's just on these guys mm -hmm. um i feel like their teamwork isn't uh as quick and as together as it was like a yeah. few weeks ago i feel like now it's like a lot more solo you see a bz trying to make like singular <clears throat> plays you see simp trying to run everybody and it's like a lot of the times that that can work but uh it didn't work this weekend i, I mean now, i think it's something else Guardian, what do you think it is i think the it's the exact opposite of the seattle surge right they went into this event having nothing to lose, right? They play loose. You make whatever play. You don't got to worry about nothing. Mm -hmm. I think FaZe, they kind of realize that they have a lot to lose. Not only are they the best team in the game um, going into this event, <clears throat> like they were unbelievable last year. They didn't win champs. They didn't, so they, they're thinking about that. A lot of people are saying they're the next dynasty, right, if they win this champs. So they have like a lot of pressure on them. Uh -huh. and, I, and I feel like they're playing too stiff. Like they're mm -hmm. not playing how they normally play because of that all that pressure on them. Like they're expected to win now every single event, and they're uh -huh. expected to not drop a series. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I like they don't want to make those mistakes, but they just don't even give themselves an opportunity to like make a riskier play. You know what I mean? And yeah. And and see what happens. Well, that's that's, that's why I that's said Ian, I think. that's why I said Ian like they're in their own head. That's basically what yeah, I was saying. Yeah, I think you're right. Like, so is it what enables talking about the fact that they're overthinking things that the pressure is getting to them right now, which is maybe understandably so. They've been no doubt the dominant team of the season. It's getting down to crunch time, and all of a sudden things start to go wrong. You get in your own head. You're thinking, oh my god, like we might throw this one away again. Not playing um, as loose as they were as a team. And there's been a fair bit of talk, and I easy Max said it on the Breaking Boy podcast a couple of times. Whenever they lose a series, that kind of loosens them up a bit, right? When they were on like a massive win streak, they were playing a lot like not even to lose rather than playing to win but um, the problem is for them now is that maybe they're doing a similar thing in the sense that they're going into stage five major and champs where um you know there's a lot of pressure on them to win therefore they really want to play not to lose but um and then that you know starts to cost them right and they don't play as loose and free flowing as a team they're you know not playing the teamwork isn't quite there as our Steve was talking about in tweets a couple of days ago they're playing for more individual chals this comes out from an enigma on the reddit right i thought this is particularly interesting the elo ratings right now this wouldn't necessarily line up with what i would do as a power rankings probably do a power reckon too in a couple of days time but um phase in terms of elo ratings based on this past weekend are still the dominant team in the
the game. Toronto second, Minnesota Rocket made a massive jump into third, but still, that's why FaZe are still the bookies odds on, right, for this past weekend or for this next weekend, the championship. FaZe are still like odds on to win the entire thing, but um, still, things have not been looking so good for them as late, especially as Tempest saying, look, when we played them in scrims not so long ago, we actually were putting up a great fight, much more than we would do earlier in the season. Like FaZe used to just demolish teams. Zoom was asking on stream, like, um, to the FaZe guys whether they'd even lost a scrim this entire season, and Zoom wasn't sure if they had in terms of map count. So I am very excited to see how this goes. Of course, we have no real measure of how these teams are going to be performing until we actually get to champs itself. So I'm sure FaZe are going to heavily go back to the drawing board here and figure out exactly what's going wrong. They've got a couple of weeks to figure things out. They probably will do. But um, still, the pressure is on them, right, to prove that, yes, there was all this dynasty discussion. Uh, if they win this World Championship this year, if they then go on to the you know next season and continue performing well, are they like um, up there with the best dynasties of all time? Of course, it's been online and uh, these tournaments are easier to win because you only have to win like um, the three matches in some of these majors to actually win the entire thing. So definitely, I think um, the discussion is there to be had. But uh, on this current form, they're not going to be there at all. And uh, well, this team may go out the window, right? It's not out of the realms of possibility that this team even considers changes before the end of the season if things do not go so well at the World Championship, right? To finish off the video, wanted to talk about this from the Halo esports side. Thought this was particularly interesting, especially with regard to Call of Duty and um, the potential of cross-platform. So Halo esports, of course, with Halo Infinite coming out is um, certainly back into the forefront of conversation. And it will feature cross-platform and cross-input competition across Xbox and PC. Our goal is to foster the most open and accessible ecosystem to date, allowing anyone to play. Very interesting indeed. The whole um, idea that you can play Halo on a PC, or like let's just say Call of Duty on a PC, I don't know how much um, different it could potentially be, but we are really concerned, or at least I'm concerned, that um, the CDL go down the route of now allowing cross-input, like cross-input play for Call of Duty esports, because um, the problem is all of a sudden that uh, you can imagine a lot of the pro players that, uh, let's say, they're playing Warzone right now on a mouse and keyboards, there's a lot more you can do with a mouse and keyboard than a, a controller, and um, therefore we may, over time, lose a lot of our pro players. Maybe some of them will stay, maybe some of them can still compete, but um, you'd imagine a lot of our pros and a lot of the personalities in the scene end up leaving or like uh, we're getting forced out if cross input comes into play. So um, very interesting Halo Esports decided to go down this route. Frosty, of course, who played Call of Duty for a while and now is over back on the Halo side, they literally separate the ranked playlist by input. So obviously they have a reason why they want to separate uh, you know, the, the controller inputs, but yet for competitive scene, they're allowing to have mouse and keyboard and controller coexisting. These guys do not care about competitive, just choosing to break competitive integrity straight off the bat. So Frosty and other players like him are not particularly happy at all with the decision that they are making. But uh, well, some players like Morks, for example, in the, in the challenger scene in the Call of Duty side, Halo Esports looking real interesting, maybe even considering going over there, right, going forwards, depending on how it goes. But um, still, yeah, the crossing but stuff is a concern, I think, if I was a Halo fan, but also as a Call of Duty fan, looking at that, I'm thinking, all right, hang on a second, lads, let's not, um, let's just see how it goes, right? And if it works out horribly for them and uh, everyone, like, I don't know, some of the big name players get forced out of the scene, then maybe the Call of Duty the League will think twice about doing the same thing in the future, which um, could indeed be a positive. But very much intrigued to hear your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, I'd greatly appreciate a like on the video. Really upset that the YouTube are going to like you enjoyed this content. Other people like you may enjoy this content as well. And I've grown the competitive quality community. Thank you as always. Take care. And I will see you next time.